Hello. Today, let's discuss one problem which has been troubling generations of students. That is, what is the difference between permutation and combination? Not that we'll be drilling into a lot of questions today, but we'll try to understand the concept and the difference between the two terms, permutation and combination. Let's take a very simple example of a small classroom of just four people. Let us keep the names as A, B, C and D, the four people inside the classroom. I as a teacher have a marker with me. Simple question like how many ways can I give this marker to these students? I can safely say that I can give the marker to A or to B or to C or to D. That means I can give this marker to four people in four different ways. Perfectly fine till now. If I just add one more complexity by saying I have two markers. Both of them are same similar black markers. If there are four people and I have to give two markers, I can take A, B, give them a marker each. I can take B, C, give them a marker each. I can take A, B, A, C, A, D, I can take B, C, B, D or I can take C, D. Now we know that because both the markers are same, A and B won't have a problem with it. If I give it to A first and then to B second or I give it to B first and then give it to A second because both the markers are the same, there is no problem with the students. Overall, if I just select two people and I say A, B, I give the marker this way or I give the marker this way, it does not matter because both the markers are the same. So A, B as a set, I'm only selecting two people, giving the marker is no problem at all. Just by adding that small complexity by saying instead of two markers, had it been two medals, one gold and the other one silver, yes, A, B will have a problem. If I give the gold medal to A and I give the silver to B, it is not the same as giving a gold to B and a silver to A. So here the complexity of taking care of the arrangement of the medals also becomes important. Consider the same problem of four people sitting in a classroom and we consider two medals with me. One a gold, other one silver. What matters here is that whom do I give the first one to? Here also I can try working out on the older logic by selecting just two people out of these four. A, B, C, D. All I have to do is randomly select two people. Chalo, let me select A and B. Once I select A and B, I have to give these two medals to them. I can give gold to A or silver to A and respectively give the second one to B. Here there becomes two orders. Like how we had calculated A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D and C, D. So there are six, but six into two because which medal are we giving to whom plays an important role here. Now, if we go back and think about what is the formula which we must have learnt in our school about combination and we think about what is the formula that we have for permutation. If there would have been two people and I have to select two people to give the same marker. I think back on the formula of combination which is 4C2. If I say 4C2, it is 4 factorial upon 4 minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial. 4 factorial is 24 upon 2 factorial into 2 factorial that is 4 will give me 6. Exactly what we calculated in the first case where I had 2 markers and irrespective whom do I give which marker to. That means if there were 4 people and 2 identical markers by logic what am I doing is selecting 2 people which I can do by applying combination and I say 4C2. 4C2 is equal to 6 which is equal to selecting 2 people out of 4 irrespective of the order. Now if I think through the formula of 4P2 that is 4 factorial upon 4 minus 2 factorial. 4 factorial was 24. 
4 minus 2 factorial is 2 factorial which is 12. This 12 is what we calculated as 6 ways of selecting 2 people and multiplied by 2 ways of keeping them either way. That means giving them gold medal first and silver medal second. So here the same combination of AB is being arranged in two ways AB or a BA because the two medals are distinct. Now if I go back and say if the two markers would have been distinct I would have to apply P that is for permutation and if both the medals would have been same I will have to go back and apply C which is for combination. A lot of people in a mature jargon say combination is nothing but selection. I do not have to care about the arrangement. On the other hand, permutation is first selection and then arrangement. We need to be careful on what is being asked. Let us first look at one good example which clarifies both the things together. Extending those 4 people and 2 markers to 10 people and 3 markers. Had there been 3 markers, all I need to do is select 3 people. Selecting 3 people as we just about discussed is combination and not an arrangement if all the 3 markers are the same. I am going back to the question, there are 10 people in the classroom and 3 markers which are identical. That means all I have to do is select 3 people. I don't care if it is A, B, C or in whatever order, whether it is B, C, A, A, C, B or whatever. All I need to do is select 3. That means it is 10 C3 or 10 combinations 3 means the ways of selecting 3 people out of 10 people. Same thing extended to gold, silver and bronze medals would mean I have to put in the formula of 10 P3 which is 10 factorial upon 10 minus 3 factorial that is 7 factorial. Let's look at one problem which applies both of them together. How many signals can be made with five different flags by raising them any number at a time. If I have five flags with me, let's name those flags as A, B, C, D and E because they are five different flags. If I raise a flag of A, I know there is one signal because they are any number at a time. If I raise the flag B, there is another signal. So by raising one flag at a time, I am very sure I can generate five signals. <laughs> no complexity till now. If I think about signals generated out of two flags at the same time. If I pick up two flags A and B, I am so sure that I can make two signals. One is a signal AB, other one is a signal BA. Similarly, if I pick up B and C, I can make CB or a BC. Now I need to think in how many ways can I select two which is 5C2. The moment I select 2, that is 5C2, I am actually arranging those 2 into making it as 2 factorial. Effectively that 5C2 into 2 factorial is nothing but 5P2. Let's go back. Let's go back one step. 5C2 is 5 factorial upon 5 minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial, which is 5 factorial upon 3 factorial into 2 factorial. If I multiply this 5C2 into 2 factorial, what I effectively get is 5 factorial upon 3 factorial which is the same as 5P2. So if I go back to the problem of flags wherein I say 2 flags, all I have to do is select those 2 flags and arrange which is 5C2 into 2 factorial. Extending it to 3 flags, it will be 5C3 into 3 factorial. Similarly, 5C4 into 4 factorial, 5C5 into 5 factorial. Somewhere we are accidentally deriving a formula which is 5C3 into 3 factorial will be 5P3 because selecting 3 people and arranging is the same as permutation. 5C4 into 4 factorial will be 5P4, 5C5 into 5 factorial will be 5P5. That means the answer to this question will be 5P1 plus 5P2 plus 5P3 plus 5P4 plus 5P5 which is 5P1 is 5, 5P2 20, 5P3 60, 5P4 120, 5P5 also 120 
adding all of these up will give me the answer as 325 which is the right answer in this one particular problem we saw how permutation and combination are applied I do not care if you do not know the term permutation and combination what you should be more familiar with is the word selection and arrangement because they seem more layman kind of terms for wherever there is only selection we apply combination for wherever there is selection and arrangement we apply permutation best of luck to all of you for this complicated topic do well